Or also why you shouldn't switch. Because while Fujifilm is amazing and I have loved my transition from the Canon R6 to the Fujifilm X-H2S, I do recognize that it isn't perfect and Canon has upsides for sure. But over the course of this video, I'd like to explain a few reasons why I made the switch and hopefully help you out if you're in a similar position and you're considering changing systems. So firstly, a little backstory for you. Up until this year, I had been shooting with a Canon since 2014. I initially beginning with a 5D Mark I and then a 5D Mark III and finally a Canon R6. I had always loved the EF mount and I thought that the lenses and price to performance ratio of the system was excellent. I had dabbled with Fuji in 2019, I bought an XE3 and I really enjoyed it, but a lack of dual card slots meant that I didn't feel comfortable using it for professional work. So it was strictly a personal camera for me. I did always love the images the XE3 was capable of putting out. There is a certain look to the Fuji that is just so special. It might be something to do with the X-Trans sensor that's inside, but I ended up selling it in 2020, right before they rose to crazy prices. I think I sold it with a 23 F2 for like just $800. Australian. Yeah, which if you know the current prices of Fuji is very, very cheap. I ended up returning to use my 5D Mark III, which I adored. And I eventually decided that it was time to move properly into the mirrorless space. And Canon had recently released the R6, which looked great. I sort of always like stayed away from, I, I never really was interested in the, in the RF mount up until the R6 and R5 had come out because I do really require dual card slots just for redundancy reasons. And the R5 was just far too expensive. The, the R6 was sort of the option that kind of really resonated with me. So I bought that in 2021 and honestly, I never really fell in love with it. Like sure, technically it was an engineering marvel with autofocus that was blisteringly quick and accurate and amazing low light performance, but kind of lacked any sort of soul. The same reason why I dislike Sony cameras. <laughs> It just felt boring to shoot with. It was never inspiring and it was always just a bit of a chore. Like, I just, I don't know. I think with the R6, I sort of, I never wanted to take it with me and shoot any personal work with it. It was literally only a camera I used for like client work, which was a shame because I didn't get into photography for the money. I got into it because I loved it. And it, it's always been the one constant in my life that I have always really, really enjoyed photography. So it was, it was a bit depressing. I didn't love using it. I just didn't really enjoy it. And then came the cost of the RF lenses. So I had a few EF lenses that I was using, you know, at the time. And like, to be fair, the converter that they sell, like the EF to RF adapter, it does work really, really well. Like the, the autofocus speed is just as good as it was on the EF, if not any better. But you know, if I wanted to buy RF lenses, so native mount lenses for this system, I would be on the hook for so much money. I mean, look, a 24 to 70 2.8 for RF is three and a half thousand Australian dollars, right? That is so much money. <laughs> it is so much money. And you know, even, even like the cheap, cheap RF lenses, like uh, the 1.8, like the 24 millimeter 1.8 with like a basic plastic body, Canon wants 999 Australian for, which is absurd. I mean, 999 Australian is how much you can get most of Fuji's like top lenses for. Even, even like, yeah, like there's not that many Fuji lenses that cost more than a thousand bucks. I'd wanted a change. I sort of wanted to, I wanted to fall back in love with photography and I purchased a used X-Pro2 in April of this year as a birthday present to myself. And I just, I tell you what, I absolutely fell in love with it. It reminded me what I loved so much about the X-E3 back in 2019, and it was just so much fun to take photos again. I had used the X-Pro2 professionally at a few shoots, and I realized that it was actually perfectly capable, although the autofocus performance on it was not all there. And it just, it really led me to be hesitant to jump shit until I had heard of the X-H2S. Now, this was a camera that I had heard incredible things about. I mean, autofocus, as good as the best Canons, low light performance on part two, incredible video performance, a stacked sensor. Like this thing had it all. Couple it with the fact that Fuji lenses are all really reasonably priced and in my opinion, built much better than Canon's lenses. I mean, they're all metal for, for starters. It was just a perfect storm. I had to give it a go. And in the back of my mind, for sure, I did have that full frame versus crop sensor sort of mentality going on, but the X-Pro2 really alleviated those issues because the images I was getting out of that camera, I didn't really care that it wasn't full frame. This thing was putting out some unbelievable images and at the end of the day, for me, I couldn't care less how big the sensor is. If the photos look great, the photos look good. That's all that matters. 
and I ended up buying an X-H2S and a 16 millimeter F1.4. And I had tried it out as a club photography camera. And herein, I encountered my first issues. The camera was missing focus almost like 60% of the time. It seemed really, really odd, but it just kept missing focus. So this was extremely frustrating. And I had actually spent hours troubleshooting, trying to see what the issue was. I changed autofocus settings, tried a different lenses. It did not matter. Somehow the autofocus on Dex H2S was worse than my old X-Pro2. It wasn't until I tried to record video and I encountered strange glitches being caked into the files that I realized that it might actually just be a faulty camera. So it would only have been about a week or two since I got the camera. So I went and got it exchanged and thankfully the new camera has been flawless. So this new camera, which is filming me right now, had much improved autofocus performance and coupled with the modern 18 millimeter 1.4 WR, the autofocus is exceptionally quick, reliable, and accurate. I would say fairly close to the R6, but still not quite as good. Um, it does still miss focus in areas where it probably shouldn't, and the tracking, while it's good, it's not as perfect as Canon's. So next up came low light performance. And seeing as I shoot a lot of nightclubs, good low light performance is important for me. And the R6 delivered amazing images in even the dimmest situations. And while the X-H2S is definitely great, it's not in the same league as the Canon, unfortunately. With Images not really looking fantastic after 4000 ISO, whereas the Canon could comfortably shoot at 6400 to 12800 ISO all day, every day. But, but, where the Fuji trumps the R6 in is in sheer enjoyment factor. It is just fun to take photos again. The colors that I can achieve with it, the tactile nature of the user experience, which is even better on the X-T5, which I also ended up buying shortly after the X-H2S because Surprise, surprise, you can actually buy another body and a flagship lens in the Fuji world for the same money as just one L lens in RF mount. You know, this is two and a half grand for the body and a thousand bucks for this 90 F2. Crazy, absolutely crazy. The other thing that I adore about Fuji is their lenses. So back when I had the XE3, the 23 F2 was like glued to that camera and it was tiny, sharp, well-made and very affordable. And now the 1814WR is without a doubt the best 28 millimeter full frame equivalent lens that I've ever tried outside of a Leica Q, which you can't really compare it with because that's like five and a half thousand dollars or more. And it is also a fixed lens camera. So the Q is phenomenal, but yeah, different vibe entirely. <laughs> the 51.0. It's special and it produces incredible results. And the 90 F2, which I have right here as well, is also amazing. This is one hell of a telephoto. And in my opinion, it honestly, it's just like, it gives the legendary Canon 135 F2 a run for its money as well. And it look, it would also be hard to forget mentioning the fact that Fuji is just smaller. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's more compact than the Canon was, and it really makes a noticeable difference when I'm holding the camera for an extended period of time or if I'm traveling with it as well. And that incredible X factor that the X-E3 was capable of delivering, it's still just as present with the X-H2S and the X-T5. There is just something about the combination of Fuji glass with the Fuji sensor that produces photos that I just couldn't produce with Canon. It just, they all have a certain look to them. And I believe that all camera systems have a distinct look to them. Like, you know, Sony has a look, Canon has a look, etc., etc. But Fuji most certainly has this look as well, which is, the look is just extremely pleasing when you're shooting portraits or like if you're taking, if you take a lot of photos of people, Fuji just does it so well. I don't know what it is, the skin tones, the grain structure, all that stuff just comes out really, really nice. And also as well, like if you're into emulating film, in my opinion, uh, nothing comes close to the Fuji in terms of being able to emulate film digitally. And I'm not even talking about like the built-in film emulations, like those are great as well but just the way that the sensor renders images and yeah, the grain structure especially, it has a very, very film-like look to it. The, the X-T5, I mean, it's got 40 megapixels, so it's heaps of resolution, double the resolution that my old R6 had as well. So I, in my opinion, the images just turn out unbelievable out of this camera and I'm so, so happy with it and the X-H2S, which is filming me right now. And now look, look, I know that one is full frame and one is crop sensor, right? I am aware that the depth of field will be different. I know that. And the, you know, the Canon is the technically superior camera and yet, and yet the Fuji just won my heart. So I have zero issues making it work with my professional workflow and the build quality of it is phenomenal as well. My wallet thanks me too. Thanks to how cheap you can buy most of Fuji's best glass, I mean, relatively speaking compared to the Canon at least, I was able to build up a great collection of lenses to suit any occasion. 
Whereas the same feat with the RF mount would have been unbelievably expensive. And the other thing that I've been learning to get into is videography. So with the X-H2S, I am so grateful for how easy it is to get such great looking footage out of it. All of my YouTube videos are filmed with it and I have really enjoyed learning and understanding how videography works through making these videos for you guys. If you wanna see more of this kind of content, be sure to subscribe. All in all, I love to take photos again and it's visible in my clients' reactions to my work and I think in my opinion, when you enjoy using the tools you have, you will create better work in the process. That's just the simple fact. And is there any part of me that regrets the switch? No, not really. Perhaps if I'd been okay with the RF mount's preposterous prices and lack of any third party offerings, as it stood, the Canon system just didn't offer much value for money for me. And I am more than capable of producing images that meet my standards with the Fuji. And I actually enjoy doing so now. That being said, I think if you really, really demand the absolute best autofocus possible, and you need that exceptional low light performance, then look for sure, the Canon probably is the right choice. Maybe a Sony, I don't know. But it's, it's just not for me. I love Fuji, I'm so happy with it. And I would say that if you're in the same position as I was, try to buy an older Fuji and see if that works with your current style. Think about what you really need from a camera, what you value and what you'd like it to do for you. Look, I wouldn't blindly sell my current system and buy into something else on the advice of strangers online only. It's always important to get first-hand experience with a camera system before you switch to it. Have you guys been in a similar position? Did you guys make the switch or did you go the other way around from Fuji to Canon or Sony? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like it because it definitely helps me out as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.